Alright, so... Over since the eclipse, I've been getting a lot of people sending me uh, photographs and videos and you know, some really nice quality high resolution camera work with filters on it. I still see the, the solar spots and sunspots on the sun. So that's, it comes into, into totality. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit here so you can see the full image. So then what I was doing was just taking that into a uh, cranking up the saturation and reducing the uh, curves and things to see what I could actually just see in the image. So this is the original image. And I took up the curves before was to see if I could get a moon to render any kind of a crescent, anything or in front of the sun to indicate that is actually the moon because we, we you know keep looking for the eclipses always occur with yeah, no moon and you never see the the moon approach it and you never see the moon exit and in my 3d software i i was trying to render that and actually model it in advance to get an idea of what we would expect to see standard diffraction and particle physics and that's what this image is here is I put in a artificial sphere, you know, the particles are there, the sun object is at the, the right distance and it's the scale and the luminosity is approximated. And then I'm passing a moon in front of the sun to occult it and simulate. So this is CGI, obviously I got the sun here, this and to simulate an eclipse just to study what might happen. Actually, pass a solid object in front of an illuminated object. Well, you would expect to see, since it's supposed to be a sphere, you should see a crescent of some type passes into the light frame, and then the shadow starts to cast. And then the closer it gets to totality, well, then you would see it eventually go black, but still have this diamond ring effect, which would be, which we do see. Found interesting is there's no crescent coming in, and there's no crescent coming out during a natural eclipse. And uh, so when I started messing with the levels on the pictures, it's like there is there is no object here occulting the sun. What I'm seeing here is actual warping of, of the field, the magnetic field that the sun, our perspective through. It's like it's coming down the, the center of a toroidal magnetic field through a pipe. And it's actually crossing into a node point where the, the phase is starting to shift, like a like a musical note on a guitar. If you hit the, if you hit the, you know at the seventh harmonic, it vibrates both sides of the string, but those tones are now opposite, which gives you that nice high pitch ring. It ends up being a, a harmonic, and they cancel each other out, so it, it vibrates at that center point. To be sure, I was like, well, I'll take uh, some photos of another friend of mine from a different state, this guy's, uh, this is Robert's image and he's from Alabama. It was from Montana, Bradley Gillen's image and this is uh, Robert House's image from Montana, from uh, Alabama area. This is his original. There is no occulting the sun that I could tell. This was the tality. This one at random find on Facebook, and uh, it was a great shot. I pulled it down as well, and you can see that it, it's there's definitely a shift the, during the total solar eclipse, and it's, you can see the phasing of it, where the one side of the of the vortex magnetic vortex tunnel, so to speak, is now acting like a mirror and reflecting the red spectrum from the other side, crossing over flipped and reflected from this side, the green's being on the inside of this disc, just the black, that's just black light, There's nothing there, but it's actually just creating like a, a tunnel, no matter what spectrum I put it in, and you can't see, there's no, and typically, you know, if, you know, we're leaning heavily towards the 
the moon. Being, uh, here's another floor. You know, if you, you can see that it, many occasions it's actually backlit, and they say, okay, well, this is Earthshine. Well, I don't buy into that. I think the moon is actually a, um, has a bit of both. It's self luminous, depending on the phase of it, and it's also reflective and can absorb sunlight, and it's actually to a degree, right? It's being lit up on the inside, it's like a, a semi solo semi-solid hollow type of refracting crystal and metal crystal type of object and I did the same with the moon so I raise it and you can kind of see it that's exactly what's happening it's it's dark here you crank up the, the saturation on it well now it's actually the lights it's coming through it and being cancelled out on the top side you can't see it here it's an inverse image so it's to me, it appears to be hollow every time I do. And the other things I noticed during the eclipse I found was um, a lot of people were catching this type of image. So it's it's going into almost totality here. There's the, a forward projected image being graphically beamed in and appearing in the sky below where the actual light source is the hue around it and it's a perfect crescent moon type of shape and this this is an independent photo not taken by this person and this is another photo done by Paul Hall he's from Nashville you can see that's actually being split into the spectrum of the red spectrum and then the blue shift has an inverted image so it's actually upside down light source which is the similar one that you got here and so then I looked at 360 cameras I had a high I did find one really good high altitude camera and it was done at 75,000 feet during totality this is the center. granted it was a really high temperature so there is a little bit of icing on the on the 360 lens so these are ice crystals that are being illuminated. However, the, the light that's coming from the source, sun light source, you can tell it's coming from different angles. Like it's actually coming at all, all angles and reflecting into these little orbs of ice crystals, either between the camera and the light source, or they could actually be on the, uh, the camera lens itself. Move, and they, they seem to stay with the sun object as it moves around in the field field of light it's some fantastic images as I look at that I and mean, you can't deny it. that's crystal there's crystal stuff going on there like uh, or refraction within everywhere you look some fantastic images with a perfectly flat plane by the way I'll point that out you can see that nice flat plane on the 360 camera some feet with these orbs of the crystal refraction this was just prior to totality. Now let's see, it's, it's actually starting to arch like a dome, like a crystal dome. And what I found even to correlate the two together was that when coming down to the people on the ground that were taking pictures, some of them, you know, up on their stuff enough to turn around and take a picture of the ground as the light comes through the trees. Wherever there's a a shadow in the leaves of the trees and it's like a pinhole camera of these little half moon crescents again appearing on the ground everywhere they looked and the pictures of that too that's what happened. So that refraction between the trees yeah. kind of finalized that I talked it off with some stuff that I knew happens in Karis to make sure the same thing as this moon. This is this isn't the eclipse, but it's a standard full moon on a, on a decent night. You can see that the wires passing through the, the luminary, and then the image is being projected forward because the moon. So it's being projected forward. Uh, so it'll be like forward X-ray scattering. 
appearing to the camera within the camera lens and being inverted upside down. So this, there's the shadow of that wire. The light's been canceled and it's a perfect picture of the moon appearing below where the light actually is. That uh, people don't get confused as to why they see this happen. They're trying to take a picture of the moon. They end up with this secondary over it's like a double exposure within the camera lens itself. This one was another 360 camera. Oops. So it was, uh, uh, you couldn't actually see the sun in here anywhere at all. And it looks like all these crystals, if I zoom in on the, it's like, look at all these little tiny circles and crystals and the same effect. So I had to try to conclude that either, either that is ice on top of the camera and they get iced out completely going up to the balloon above. And this would be either ice on top of the camera lens or, or we're seeing the top of the dome looking up into a fluid. Because when I watched this video during an eclipse, never left this circle. It stayed in the circle and just kind of went around and around and around in this circle as the balloon spun around and the camera moved out here at all. It just stayed within the confines of this crystal lattice. Or it's actually the dome itself. It could very well be. So I kind of concluded that uh, what's happening is it's it's basically a diffraction of laser laser diffraction going on, and it's, it's bringing all these images like a holographic projection into our perspective. And that kind of leads me to a, a food for thought moment to leave with people is that elves on the plane of existence at the bottom, all the light we know is actually outside of our field and it's all being projected in here through the toroidal fields and magnetic fields down the funnel into the center, receive light and it starts to vibrate and refract and make our, you know, or make our toroidal it's just light manifesting matter at the center of our perspective. And this is where we see it and we perceive it in the third dimension as fourth dimensional beings, like Santos has said before, 40 beings observing the third dimension. And all of this is like the fifth to our perspective. So that's where I'm at with it currently and in the research. Sense to to you, Santos, and our listeners, and, and get your feedback on it. Yeah. Which one? This one here? Yeah, essentially, what I think is happening he has the. It's like. Uh, the sun is like acting like a polarized X polarized X ray type of laser coming through a crystal lattice dome in through the crystals. And when it hits the crystals, which can be like solgen and it's under such pressure and it's so cold that it's actually hydrogen turtle. And it has the lattice work of the cube hexagon and it starts to uh, refract like the double slit experiment. So which is why we end up seeing this type of uh, x-ray. It's like you're looking down through a tunnel and you're getting all these images and it cancels at the center. So if the sun kind of crosses into the center of the, you know, it starts to cross into the center of the gun, the barrel of the gun, so to speak, it just goes black because it can't render itself. It comes an eclipse and passes out the other side and that's, it's like the double slit type of experiment where it just refracts. What's going on? And my my best educated guess as to what's happening. So research. Yeah, it is. Like it's the sun. The sun is actually in a magnetic field, in a toroidal magnetic field, and it's it's the sun's light interfering with itself canceling itself out, it crosses phase, and it just goes out of phase and then comes back into phase. It's an eclipse, but there's actually nothing, nothing there but the sun itself. I can't find anything, any solid object, 
interfering with the sun's light. Perspective. <laughs> yeah, I think he's a 100% spot. Yeah, because um, it's a combination of these three uh, substanceless light bodies. Sun, king of the universe. Uh, and the moon is considered to be subject uh, or rather subservient to the sun simply because, um, uh, you know, its ability to um, make the moon invisible when it's anywhere near the sun. Therefore, he's considered to be the king in, in that respect only. But um, the node is, is just a node. It's, it's, there's no body there, you know. There's, it's just the intersecting of two planes. And so, um, as the sun goes uh, through that, the um, it it does seem like the waves um, going out of phase, and then that node is just that cancellation point, which only lasts for a little bit. Um, and 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 I've looked I've looked at the speed of Rahu and the speed of the moon, and uh, whatever caused the eclipse was just too fast. If if it was the if it was the, the sun overpassing um, the moon, it's still way too fast. It, you need about six hours of eclipse, really. And so it's a combination of sun, moon and north node, which are basically sources of light that when they um, together like this, uh, the sun's light is cancelled, but you will never see anything solid at all. That definitely there's there's no solidity uh, to the moon, and there's no solidity to this uh, fulcrum of uh, of what we call a node. So um, 